Let's go right now to uh, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We see what Paul says about a, the trouble that came to him. Look at the nature of this trouble. Paul says, We do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure. Wow, that is some trouble. Troubles where he says, We were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. When it comes to one of the troubles that came on Paul, uh, uh, to the point that it was so burdensome, it was so uh, 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 terrible that he says he despaired even of life. What trouble is that? Paul didn't define it, amen? But he defined it as trouble that was, was so bad. And he says that uh, even then, he put his trust in God. Now the next verse says, Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that He will still deliver us. And notice the three dimensions of God's deliverance here. God who has delivered us, and obviously uh, Paul was delivered from this trouble, amen, from this deadly trouble. It was a trouble of the nature where it, it was very deadly. And it says that God delivered us, that's past tense, Amen. Then the next one, and does deliver us, that's present tense. In whom we trust that He will still deliver us, that's future tense. So we have God who delivered us, God who is, does deliver us, present tense, and He will still deliver us. So that's the attitude a believer must have. If there's trouble, even the most terrible kind of trouble that you're in, amen, believe that God who has delivered you, will deliver you now, amen, will deliver you as well as is delivering you even as we speak right now. And that's the posture that the apostle had, which is the Christian posture towards troubles, amen. Jesus shared with his disciples on that sermon, on, in that sermon on the mount where he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We covered that. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's why prayer has got to be daily. Notice, you cannot just pray, Father, give me this monthly bread. Amen? At the, at the first week of the month, you pray this prayer. Or you pray at the beginning of the year, uh, give me this, this year uh, my yearly bread. It doesn't work that way. God wants you always to come to Him. God wants you to be in a relationship. God loves you. God loves to hear your voice. Amen? And uh, in some Song of Songs, it says, uh, how I love to hear your voice, to see your countenance. The Lord loves you, my friend. And He loves, just like the way I, I would love to hear my, my son's voice. But more than that, I want to have him in my presence. Just to look at him, just to embrace him, gives me such joy. In the Old Testament, the more you come to God, chances are you might be smitten dead because you come in the wrong way. And people are afraid to come to God. But friends, today is the direct opposite because of what Jesus did at the cross. The same blood that He shed that tore the veil into access into God's presence removed our sins. The same blood removed our sins for us to go in now. Today is a new and living way. I know you understand the word new, which is actually in the Greek, is freshly slain as if He just died just now. But the word living means the more you come to God, the more you pray every day, the more you, you come into His presence, amen? The more you live, amen? Amen. The more you come to God, the more you live. Doesn't that excite you? Doesn't that make you want to spend time with God, come to Him, amen? Ask God even to prosper you like John did. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health even as your souls prosper. Because God knows you don't ask Him to prosper you. You look to somebody else to prosper you. You look to some source to prosper you. And God doesn't want you to trust in any other source but Himself alone. That all the glory belong to Him alone. Can I have a good amen? In Matthew 6, where Jesus talked about the Lord's Prayer, He came to this point, And do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Friend, the word here, temptation is the word pyrasmos. Now, pyrasmos can either be trouble, affliction, difficulty, or it can be solicitation to sin, temptation. Now, in the King James, they always use the word temptation. At the end of his ministry, Jesus looked at his, his disciples and said, you are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Now, does that mean that Jesus 
was talking about temptation to sin, solicitation to sin. No. The word temptation can either mean what? Two things. Trouble, difficulty, or solicitation to sin. And we must look at the context. So in other words, Jesus is saying, you have been with me through all my trials. Amen? He's not saying about temptation to sin. Okay, we go back to uh, the Lord's Prayer. It says, and lead us. Now, this word lead us is not the usual word. I think this is where the misunderstanding comes in. It's as if, for me to pray to God, lead us not. That means the idea is that uh, God may lead you into temptation if you don't ask Him not to. But the word lead here is not the usual word like in Romans 8, it says, uh, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, that word led there is the word ago. This is not the same word used here. In fact, this word used in, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, lead us should actually be better translated as do not bring us. Do not bring us. Let me not be brought. So every day, friend, pray that prayer. God wants you to pray that prayer. That's what the Lord's Prayer is about. To pray, God, let my family and I not be brought into trouble. Now, I know there are troubles. I know living life on earth, there is trouble. But can you see the heart of God? God wants you to pray. Maybe if we pray this prayer, we'll not be brought into more troubles than we already are in. But we have to ask the question, you know, we don't judge God's Word by experiences. Experiences must be judged by God's Word. Amen. And if not, it's not lined up with God's Word, we line the experience up with God's Word. Friend, there's something about about trouble. Sometimes it's caused by the devil. Like in uh, the Last Supper, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sieve you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So obviously, there is a trouble that is of Satan's making. Amen? Satan probably saw something in, uh, in Peter because Peter was, you know, prior to this, he was full of self-righteousness. Amen? He was full of self-righteousness. And that's why he told the Lord, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison to death. And the Lord says, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times that you know me. And you know what happened? Because of that trial he went through, he realized it's not my love for the Lord. He was boasting about his love for the Lord but it is the Lord's love for me. Like John, John boasts of the Lord's love, amen, for him. Whereas Peter boasts of his love for the Lord. That is the law. You shall love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your soul. But John boasts in the New Testament covenant law, which is we love because he first loved us. In 1 Peter 5, he says that after you have suffered, God may you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. The God of all grace will do that. Amen? Notice, after you have suffered. When? After. There's always an after. Even a devil, in fact, in this case, it's a devil. You look at the context down there, it says the devil walking about like a roaring lion, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Our time of suffering is short. Amen? The evil day is short. That's why it's day, singular. But the good days are plenteous. The good days are a lot. Amen. The good days are numerous. Amen. Believe God for that. There is an after. After a trial, be looking for the restoration. So something greater is coming. Something greater is coming. Something greater is coming. Amen. You never come out of your trial the same way you went in. It's almost like there's a restoration. There is a recompense because you went through the trial. All of us are coming out greater stronger, perfect, established. Amen. That's what God promises. Praise the name of Jesus. And the word perfect there is completeness. Amen. So be expecting good in your future. Be expecting to see good days. You can pray for it. Amen. Don't, don't use your mouth for, I think um, the worst is yet to come. No, no, no. Say, good days are ahead of me. The best is yet to come. If you were blessed by this video, please feel free to comment on what spoke to you, hit the like button, or share this with a friend who needs encouragement. 
Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.